Well, it's been a stormy evening. That seems to be a familiar refrain around here. And um, Andrew Kozak from CBS News Philadelphia is back with your forecast, and he's filling in for Lonnie. Yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. And the rain's over with, so we've got a lot more to talk about as we head into the next couple of days. Now, we will also deal with a little bit more flash flooding tonight. There are a few areas still dealing with even some light rain, but the ground is so saturated that any few drops could cause some more flooding. But then we're going to talk about the heat, the humidity, the air quality. Yeah, it doesn't feel like we can get a break. Let's walk over to the wall. We'll see what's happening across Midtown right now. At least the skies are starting to clear out a little bit. The rain is now moving out. That will make your later commute, if you're staying late at work or getting out there tonight, a little bit easier than it was just a few hours ago. Flash flood warning, Monmouth County, until 815. We still have some really heavy rain that continues to move off the coast. Also, eastern Long Island now. We were watching that heavy rain move in. Suffolk County, though, I'd say some light to moderate showers at this point. If you're going along the LIE, we're really not looking at this strengthening. In fact, now that we're getting closer and closer to sundown, it gets kind of, uh, well, it just lightens up a little bit, and that's good news. The dry air is starting to move back in, and that's going to help overnight kick our winds over from the west at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. There's the big picture. Even the clouds starting to clear now right across the New Jersey Philadelphia line down there, and then we're going to start to see things overnight calm down. Take a look at the rainfall totals, though. These are impressive amounts because it all happened within about two to three hours. 3.4 in Rockland over toward Union County, almost two inches there. Somerset and Monmouth County, where we still have that flash flood warning. Four inches of rain. These are just estimates. The actual numbers are still being tallied up. Meantime, once we get into the overnight, we've got clear skies. There may be a little bit of fog. That's what happens with a light wind and a wet ground. That's going to also give your morning commute maybe a little bit of a slowdown. Wednesday overall, we'll have some poor air quality. We do have an air quality alert, but we will remain mostly dry. Thursday, as we turn up the heat even more, we might have a couple of pop up showers and storms. It's not going to be a big deal for us, but we'll keep our eye on it once we get into your. Thursday afternoon. Tonight, 73 degrees, rain and rumbles come to an end. Tomorrow, we're up to 90, and that begins the first of several days of 90 plus degree temperatures. Hazy, hot, and humid. Southwest winds at 5 to 15. That continues Thursday, Friday. It will feel between 102 and 108 by the end of the week. Here's your seven day plan. Hey, because of that, we actually have a red alert. No, today was yellow, but red, and it's for heat. Listen, we can deal with heat. It is July, but this is the first day that we've been like this all season long, and the first little mini heat wave that we're going to have for the summer. The good news here is once we get past Saturday with a front passage, some showers and thunderstorms, cooler, drier, more average air behind it. Next week, not looking bad at all. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, mid-80s, plenty of sunshine, but we have tomorrow and through the rest of the week with that heat. A mini heat wave? Four days? Oh, oh, make it sound so cute. It could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. We'll All take right. what we can get at That's this point. That's a good line. Yeah. Good line. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Okay.